Law of similarity. Similarity occurs when objects look similar to one another. People often perceive them as a group or a pattern. You want to remember that our mind groups similar elements to an entity. Now, that similarity can depend on things such as form, color, size, brightness of the elements. You also want to keep in mind, this part won't be on the exam, but you also want to keep in mind that how we interpret things culturally can also have an effect on how similar we th see things. So let's take a look at some examples. So if we look at our stars, if we look at our stars up here, how many groups do you see? Four rows, how many groups? Some people will see two, some people will see three, depending on how you put them together. Right, so some pe the people who say there are two groups will say, okay, here are these stars that they have blue outlines and white centers, and then the other group are the stars that are solid blue. Now, there are other people who will say there are three groups because, come on mouse, there we go, we have these stars up here, they're similar, right? We then have these stars here, and then we have this other group down here. Either one can actually be correct, depending on how we perceive it. But if you actually look closely and if you actually overlap these, the stars are the same size. Right, the spacing is pretty similar. It's how similar are the actual items. All right, what is this? It's not a trick question, by the way. <laughs> what do you see? A sun, I heard a sun. An eagle head and a sun. Now, I want you to break it down into the components and tell me what you see. A bunch of triangles. You know, you see a circle. An eagle head. Okay, it's an eagle head. All right, but it's really interesting. Usually the first thing people see is the sun. Why? Because we're looking at all of these triangles and we are grouping them together into something that makes sense to us. Now, if you look at this one, I'm not going to go into details right now because I have more examples later on, that's more than just similarity. That's also continuity, for example. So that's one of the things I want you to remember when we're talking about examples of Gestalt laws, very often you're going to have something where you can apply multiple Gestalt laws to. That's very important to remember on your midterm exam, should I decide to include that question. All right, what about this? What do you see there? You see circles. It could be two, it could be, how many are there, six? You see a square. You know, again, how is it that we tend to group them? Based on similarity. We tend to group the dark circles and we tend to group the white circles. And we do this naturally. It's not like you're thinking about it. It's immediate. It's, it, it doesn't take much of a cognitive load. So let's look at some interfaces. Let's take a look at this first one here. What goes together? What do you think? No guesses? Everything above the line on the left. Everything above the line on the left. So this, okay, okay, so these go together and this goes together. Now, you can argue that these are similar. Do you, see, do you see similarity anywhere else? The labels to the box. I'm sorry? The labels next to each box. The labels next to, to the box are, yes, those are very similar to each other. Again, 
different from this. What else? Pictures regarding the orientation. Now, here's a question I want you to think about. Because we've all seen printer, you know, our interfaces for our printer drivers, right? We go, you know, Microsoft Word, print. What is easier for us to understand? This or a bunch of words? This. Now, one of the reasons why this is easier, of course, is that it uses these very easy to interpret images or icons. The other is, is that if, if you look at eye tracking, because some, some researchers will actually have eye tracking to see where your eyes go on a screen, we treat this as a whole. Right, so that is all our orientation. So by making them similar, it's easier for us to understand. Okay, let's take a look at this. What do you think of this? Some people said good, other people are like, yeah, not so good. Okay, what do you like about it? Nothing? Okay, now everyone's like, yeah, no, it sucks. There's some good things about it. Okay, let's start with what do you not like about it? <laughs> okay, I heard all of you and understood none of you. There's this huge white space between the... There's this huge white space. And that is a problem. Right, so here, the lack of proximity is an issue. Makes it more difficult. What else do you not like about it? You're not sure. Everything is a big lump, or kind of looks like a big lump. All right, let's go to what do you like about it? And I'll ask you a quick question to help you think. What's required? Oh, everything with red arrows. See something similar there? How hard was it to figure out what was required? It was not difficult at all. All right, it takes a quick glance. Okay, those are required. Now, another thing that students have told me that they like about this, and that actually some users do like, is that if you notice at the top, we're entering a name, an address, city, state, zip code, and then you have a drop down. There are some users who will say, okay, well this makes sense up here, now I have a drop down, now that's telling me there's something new. Here I'm dealing with the address, let me go with the mouse since I can't quite reach. Here, oh, that's not good. Oh, I thought that was the fire alarm. Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, okay, here's a pop quiz. What happened to our attention? <laughs> it went to the alarm. And what is that called? Distraction. Well, <laughs> it is a distraction. What happened to our thought processes? It's your locus of attention was switched from, and you had to deal with interference. <laughs> interference. I should use this as a uh, midterm exam questions. I bet you guys will remember it. That's okay. See, I love great examples. See, you were just contributing to, to class content. All right, so let us shift back to what we were looking at and think about how long that takes you. Like. Okay, wait at least five minutes in between so we have good examples. All right, now, we're going to shift back. It takes us how long? If I wasn't talking. A few seconds. All right, so if we look at this and if there wasn't so much space here, it actually would be easier to see that this is basically an address. We have a tendency to view addresses as a whole. So if you're addressing an envelope, I'm assuming you all have still addressed at least one envelope in your lifetime, I hope. Yes? Do they still teach that in school? 
now. I guess I'll have to teach my daughter myself. She loves getting mail. All right, so that you, we consider this kind of a lump as, as an address. We have something that breaks it up here, and then we're asking for a bunch of phone numbers. Now, as I said, if this was a little clearer in terms of where the labels are, then a lot of people see this as, okay, that's a chunk, and look, here's another break. So this actually is a great example of both positive and negative applications of design. Right, so they did use similarity. But what did they completely ignore? That you already told me. It starts with a P. Proximity. Actually, that would be a great midterm question. Maybe I'll make a new one. 